forgot this countdown. <laughs> What's up, guys? Let's try that again. Happy Thursday. Happy Sweet 16 here. We got a couple games tonight. We'll go through. We'll break them down. Two NBA games we'll get through as well. And then we got plenty of time to talk about some MLB, um, some picks we had last night. We can see how those are doing. And some live betting opportunities. It's the season of live betting, so this is very exciting. Before we do that, Jake and Steven, let's take a look back at the NBA slip yesterday. Can't complain here, all right? Six and six. Something oh, I can up. complain. Yeah. Please do. I can complain when a, when my strategy of using the not minus 230 Jared Allen was the key to guaranteeing the above 500 result. And he gets a block with what will you say, Jake, nine minutes to go in the third. And yeah. then in around 25 minutes of real time, he has that block. I stop worrying and concentrating and putting all my positive energy out there thinking I secure that bet. And then you tell me 30 minutes, two hours later that they took the block away. So mm -hmm. this is the second time I've lost a bet on blocks. Let him set me down this rabbit hole of my own self introspection. I realized out of 17 different markets, blocks, three points, and assists, I've uh, made 30, comprised 35% of my picks. And those picks combined are 36 and 54 for 40% and minus 1600 versus everything else is 98 and 69 and 59% plus 2100. So I'm going to go with more with points, rebounds, and the stuff that I'm actually doing well. All right. Yeah. We, yeah. Fair enough. We have collectively realized that we uh, get burnt by three-point props quite often here. But you know what? Sometimes it just feels right, okay? Or All right, let's... had three assists at half, and that game went to overtime. I'm like, for sure he'd get it. Yeah. It was just – he got a couple of hockey assists in the second half, but then it was just Kuzma taking everything over. Yeah, so – yeah, it was bad. A couple, yeah. couple brutal blows, but we have the Sweet 16 tonight to make all of our money back. No worries there. Let's talk about all the games. Let's start with Arizona Clemson. I know we talked about them earlier. Um, let's just bring up the odds jam screen here, look at some lines here. As far as a spread, we do lean towards Clemson. We make this about, uh, we make them four point underdogs. You can find seven and a halfs out there, so that would be our lean still, right? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting that three of the four games tonight, there's pretty wide range in spreads, uh, wider than you typically see at this point in the week. Um, so, yeah, for example, if you like Arizona, you can get it at six and a half on ESPN and not too bad minus one, or even FanDuel minus 118. But then if you like Clemson, you get plus seven and a half minus 115 on the hard rocks. So, you know, or maybe you could be get them both in the middle and if they win by seven, congratulations. Mm hmm. Uh, Jake's got a player prop here. I also took a version of this as well um, in a parlay. I took PJ Hall to have 15 or more points. Uh, his real line is somewhere around 16 and a half, but you feel good if he can get to 17, Jake? Yeah, I think we have him for 17.7 points. It's more betting against Arizona's defense. And um, he's, a, I mean, if the pace of play is is different than most ACC games here against an Arizona team that likes to go up tempo. He is going up, he's coming up an off game where he fouled out. So as long as he doesn't stay in foul trouble and plays 30 minutes, then he should hit that. He only played 20 minutes the game before and then yeah. 19 minutes because that was a blowout. So I don't really look he's been, that. yeah, he's been in foul trouble in four of his last five games. So that's the only concern, but no way that goes to five out of the last six. Exactly. Guaranteed. Yeah. You can't keep doing that. You got to regress to the mean. If he gets that, I, if he gets like that same play here. that same crew as the Alabama Grand Canyon crew that just let people go over the back left and right, then he should, he should be fine. Exactly. Maybe I should have done some especially if playing in the game. Yeah, and even if they are playing from behind, like I feel like he's going to be throwing up hail marys through the fourth quarter now. Yeah, yeah. No, I just want them to allow him to get loose because you know, with, and just jump for balls and you know, get yeah. over there over the back and without getting calls. Yeah. As far as San Diego State, uh, UConn, we just don't have value as a whole here, not even some player prop value that we're that high on. If anyone has questions on it, happy to answer uh, certain props or plays you like here. Um, yeah. But we'll move on. We'll go to Illinois. I mean, I go yeah. ahead. This one just a few minutes ago, you could ha it had a range of minus 11.5 to minus 13. It looks like it's ticked off to minus 13 to 
to uh, 12 and a half is the biggest line. The, the interesting thing here is obviously a rematch of the championship game last year. And UConn was on the consensus a seven and a half point favorite in that one. UConn this year somehow is actually statistically better than they were last year. They're averaging three more points a game. And then you can see that reflected in the line here where San Diego State's also allowing more this year than, than a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we can talk a little bit about Alabama, North Carolina here. We do like Alabama outright here. We do have them covering. We have them winning um, the region in our brackets. This will be a big game for the team as well. Uh, Jake, I know you mentioned a little bit of like R.J. Davis or anything. Do you like any leans here for Baycott or Davis? I mean, Davis' lines at 23 and a half. I did play in this game um, Harrison Ingram over, I think, 21 points, rebounds, and assists. We don't have any – we have, I think, the value right there. It might have been 22 I played at, um, but the value is right in line with, with the line. I, um, our Sims have a 21.7 that's even highlighting right now. I just think he's been playing really well lately, and he's had some monster rebounding games this season. And with uh, with Alabama's pace, there's going to be a lot of rebounding opportunities. So if you look at like the middle of the season, I remember one time I had a over five and a half rebound, and he had 15 rebounds that game. I think it was against Pitt. Um, and then after that, his rebounding line was like nine and a half from then on. Um, but his rebound's gone down the last couple of games, but I think he's a massive opportunity against an Alabama team that likes to to run really fast. So I, I like the points, rebounds, and assists for Ingram, who hit five threes last game. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on here to Iowa, Iowa State, or sorry, oh. Illinois, Iowa State here. Uh, we like Illinois. Again, we have them advancing out of this round, so we obviously like them to cover, have some value on the money line as well. Let's talk about some player props, though, that we have on the other side of the ball. Yeah. That, this team. game, well, real quick, that inter- that game, was that was the one on Monday we said you had to act now because it was at you could get Illinois at plus two and a half or even plus mm-hmm. three, but that's themed. So some books have Illinois outright favored mm-hmm. now. Uh, yeah, I got Illinois at plus one. 18 earlier and now it's yeah it's about even most books um, yeah i think i um, think people are pretty are starting to go towards illinois the more people research this mm-hmm. all right let's talk about some player props here that we do like for iowa state here tam and lipsy over eight and a half rebounds and assists yeah i went with his play last week and they hit he had nine i'm pretty sure he had five rebounds four assists or, or vice versa i know he had nine um but I like this line as long as it's under nine, eight and a half is pretty good value. And he tends to hit nine a lot, it looks like yeah. lately. Um, in his last two games, he's hit nine and he's gone over his last five games. And before that, he was coming up an injury and wasn't playing his whole, I mean, his whole like 35 minutes that he usually plays. So I like him and Lipsy over eight and a half rebounds this, this year. All right. And then we'll go with this teammate here who I will not attempt to pronounce his last name. I think it's Um but It's my mother's he, name. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's been pretty good lately, Momsilovich, in terms of hitting threes. I think he's gone, He's hit at least one over two in his last three games. Looks like four. Um, after, after going through a cold streak where he didn't hit any for three straight games. But he's going against an Illinois defense that – I think they're, they're one of the, the worst defenses remaining out of every team. I think they might even be worse than Alabama, where they're pretty like even with Alabama. No. I don't know. Like Ken Palm, like if you look at Ken Palm, I think they gave up, let's see, Alabama's 101, Illinois 91. So it's not too far off. They're right, or they're right there with Alabama. NC State's next worst at 76 in Ken Palm. Uh, so that's one thing that's keeping Illinois back is their defense. It'll let a lot of teams stay close when they – when their offense is on fire. So give me Mom Silovich uh, and over one and a half threes here. All right, fair enough. Um, I uh, gypped you of a Clemson play here. We'll go backwards really quick here. Um, go with a over two and a half threes from Joe Girard. Girard? Joe Girard. 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 Yeah. He's, I mean, been in college for like six years. So he's used to playing in, in uh, big games. He played for Syracuse for a while. Uh, he's been off lately, but he's getting plenty of volume in terms of three-point yeah. attempts. Um, so he's like a 40% career three-point shooter. So it's just 
love averages. I think if he gets his nine, eight or nine three point attempts, it should go back to hitting 40%. He should hit uh, three plus here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have him at 2.9 in the model. He, um, I mean, Arizona, another team that yeah. their defense is better than these other teams like Illinois, but uh, sometimes they have defensive lapses. Yeah, their mm -hmm. three-point percentage allowed away from their home court is plus eight percentage points higher, 38%. So hopefully, even though it's in the West region, hopefully uh, Arizona's road defense is in fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So we got we got two big things on the line here tonight with Illinois and Alabama and Clemson. My roommate's a Clemson fan, so I'm a big Clemson girl tonight, and I need P.J. Hall to have his points, so. Big on Clemson tonight as well. Before we get into baseball, I see some people talking about it. Let's rip through these two NBA games really quick. Um, the first game we have is Boston headed to Atlanta. Massive, massive road favorites here, 17 and a half. Uh, interesting because they were 10-point favorites a couple days ago against Atlanta. Yeah, it swung back back down to earth to 16, 16 and a half. So, yeah, when it was at 17 and a half, I found it, found it very interesting because, you know, Boston – yeah, two, hasn't played since that game when they were 10.5-point favorites. Uh, the line reopened this game at 12.5 because Atlanta came back from 30 down. Everyone assumes that Boston's going to come back and get their revenge game. But to still, to see a 7.5-point switch change from a line three days ago when that team hasn't even played since then is, 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 is all, you know, is, is not based in statistics, in other words. But um, I, I don't, you know, love it. I do, do think if you like Atlanta, you want to get it now because it might come back down. To where it reopened mm -hmm. um the pick i like is clint capella he's you know again like i said by i didn't realize this i should have but my points props have been doing the best for for uh so far in this recent stretch uh model has almost 14 points for him very positive home trend and it's basically since jalen johnson sadiq bay their small forwards and power forwards have been out uh just a little few more shots for everybody else in the team and obviously Trey Young's still out, so a lot of the remaining starters are getting uh, all the attempts they can handle. Mm -hmm. He's heading to the games eight and two over. Centers who average similar point production, um, they average uh, two and a half more points when they play Boston at on their own home court versus playing at Boston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been good to us. I like the Clint Capella plays, um, yeah. especially with the injuries at hand here. All right, any other NBA questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm going to send Steven to the chat as well to go answer them, talk about these two games that are pretty good games. I don't think there should be any wonky, yeah. like, you know, maybe in the yeah. – I mean, the Milwaukee-New Orleans game, is, it's a close game. It should, I mean, everyone should be trying for four quarters, I assume. Yeah, no, we have we have slight value on the under, home underdog Pelicans. Um, but, you mm -hmm. know, the, I am going with Brooke Lopez because I, like, I love any situation where – Yes, his lower his road average is lower than at home, but it's still impress it's still well over the line and it's nineteen and thirteen over. Um, mm -hmm. there's buy low value because last month his its average is down to ten, but it's still seven and seven over. The interesting thing about the Valanchunas, so in twenty games against him going back to two thousand twelve for a long time, he's averaged twenty one points a game against Valanchunas. Um, and it's five higher than his overall average. And I saw on the line today, Valanciunas has been getting uneven minutes. And a lot of times, given the matchup, he gets he sits. And you would think going against a guy like Brook Lopez, a guy with that size, that this is the game that Valanciunas would play. But I think the betting markets are expecting him not to because, you know, Valanciunas can't, can't defend Lopez effectively on the perimeter. So Valanciunas' point rebounds and assist number is 17 and a half, which is well under what he averages. So I thought that was interesting that maybe mm -hmm. the betting markets are reacting to the idea that Lopez won't go crazy because Valanciunas might not get his normal run. Yeah. Yeah, I bet this down to eight and a half for my uh, parlay, as well as Trey Murphy over 13 and a half points himself. What do we have Murphy for? 18, let's uh, go. Yeah, without uh, – without, um, Without, uh, yeah, without Brandon Ingram. And he's been shooting yeah. better at home like he did last season. Last season, he was 45% on threes at home. And this season, he started under 33%. But it looks like he right. had a nice game last game until they lost. Mm -hmm. All right. I guess that's enough NBA for today. This yeah. is MLB opening day. So we must now turn to some baseball here. Before we get to uh, the major leagues here, Jake, let's talk about a few college plays we also have. Um, we'll start with... Lamar, Oklahoma. Um, I've never heard of Lamar. 
I think they're in Texas, I want to say. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're a decent baseball team. Um, let's see. Let's see where they are located. Yeah, in Texas. Um, so Beaumont, Texas. So yeah. uh, well, if you need a geography test, now you know that. Uh, but Lamar, honestly, has a pretty good baseball team. Um, and they're playing against a pretty hot uh, Oklahoma team. But it's another one where it should be – Better, better starters playing in this game. Let's see. Lamar is 19 and five this season. So, for a small school, they're playing pretty well. I just think that this line's a little too high. We have this game coming in at 11.8 runs, so we're getting two runs of value here. Um, a lot of these lines have really sharpened up on Thursday, Fridays, but I still think there's some pretty good undervalue in this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we get to the other plays, I'm looking at this live MLB slate here. There's about 9 million games occurring in this moment. Um, have you looked around at this slate? Anything you think would be interesting as a live betting opportunity? I guess right now I've been looking at the Padres Giants. Padres finally, and they were getting no hit for the first three innings. Mm-hmm. Um, they finally got a hit. I know it's going against Big Cheesy right here. Um but we might have some live betting value on the Padres. I can go run that right now. Yeah. He's confident. He has a uh, Giants minus one and a half alive. So let's see. Oh, we just, so we don't have any value right now. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's, it's so hard. There's so many games going through. Um, oh, yeah. I was thinking about Tigers minus one and a half alive against the White Sox, but um, nothing there. And the Yankees are grounding into an inning, inning double plays every single inning, three of the first four innings. And so Houston's going to blow this game up eventually. And that lines at minus three and a half on some books. So I don't mind getting Houston at minus three and a half. The Yankees just are not clutch. Mm-hmm. All right. It's two solid leans, though. I like that. We'll move on back to college baseball here, taking Florida State, Louisville to go over 10 and a half runs. Yeah, uh, Florida State's bullpen was really bad last weekend. They blew three games against Clemson. Uh, they had two eight-run leads that they blew against Clemson. So I'm surprised that the Lions just had 10.5, especially at Louisville's pitching in the last couple of years has been very inconsistent. So I think at 10.5, you're getting pretty good value. I think with this coming in like around 13. So you're getting some good value here. I parlayed um, – Florida State money line and the over on Hard Rock, which is cool that you can do same game parlays on college baseball. Not a lot of others uh, sports books let you do that. Hard Rock, the gift that just keeps on giving. Derek was asking about the Blue Jays Rays game. Um, one one top of the sixth yeah, here. Yeah, and it's two one now. Um, there it must have been just been a home run. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. Looks like it's two one. So they got Stephen at the, the yeah. Yeah. Kevin Biggio. Swing yard. Right as Derek said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Well let's let's go back to we got one more college baseball play here. Mm-hmm. Head over to Virginia to cover one and a half run line here. Yeah, this line was Virginia um Plus one and a half and minus one fifty on Hard Rock, while you get plus one and a half, minus one thirty on DK. Well, the model kind of likes Virginia outright in this game against Duke. Um, Duke's been very inconsistent uh, after starting the season off really hot, and Virginia's bats are so good. Even against Jonathan Santucci, Duke's ace, they should get good at bats. Santucci tends to walk guys, so they should get runners on base. Uh, I think there's pretty good value of Virginia plus one and a half. I don't mind their money line as well either. Okay. Go crazy with the money line. Oh, I just don't know. Do I take Illinois money line tonight? Do I take Clemson to cover? But it all just too many people on the boat. would feel more confident Illinois money line. Than, I, know. I think if Arizona wins, they probably win big. And if yeah. it's getting close, it really tends to get probably like Clemson – Luck is either about to run out or they're just going to keep riding this wave that we're seeing. Yeah, I don't mind either going like Arizona spread or, or Clemson money line. Then, yeah. Um, where I think if Clemson keeps it close and it goes into their type of game, the slower paced game, and um, Caleb Love isn't hitting shots, and 
our guy PJ Hall is in foul trouble, then Clemson could have some good money line value. But if Arizona is starting to hit threes, then I think they could easily cover the spread there. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, I'll pull up the recap screen here. Uh, actually, we've we'll, we got some questions in the chat about Houston tomorrow against Duke. I think it's around, what, four or four and a half point spread? Yeah. We don't have any value there, do we, Stephen? We, ex- we have an identical line. Of, as, as yeah. the, we, the slight value from a betting standpoint was on the total because okay. Houston, you know, they're a great defensive team, um, both teams, but uh, they've been scoring a lot of points in recent in a recent stretch. And then um, and Duke as well is a, uh, had a high scoring run. So that was the bet that we would recommend because we have the total at around 141 as opposed to uh, 134 and a half. But we have the yeah. same, basically the same spread. Let's see. Uh, Padres have first and third, no outs. All right. Let's, uh, let me, I'm, gonna, I'm just, what inning is it? They're just, it's the bottom of the fifth. I just want to see what their chances of winning is. Bottom of the fifth, one nothing. Two, two, one, nothing. one nothing. One out or first and third? Uh, no outs. First and third, no outs. So we give them a chance. I just want to see what the chance of coming back to take the win we still uh, we have them now at 57 percent uh the expected Ooh. expected runs when you have first and third no outs is what two two uh, yeah so so that's why let's yeah. see what yeah. happens but wow. now it's uh now it's one one first and second no outs first and second one one okay let's see what that yeah. does right. stay here all day yeah, yeah. And when Jake figures out how to use AP at uh, 66% now, our A pick on San Diego is looking a lot better than it did. Looks a lot better than it did. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Logan yeah. Webb looked unhittable the first three innings, and now they're getting trying to get to him. Uh oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. here we come. Here Does he come. go a lot of innings? I wonder what his innings line was because we had Logan Webb going really a lot of innings. Yeah, because you don't really know the first couple games of the season in terms of how ready, how stretched out these guys are. Yeah. So it's really player dependent and coach dependent. So um, the first couple, that's why it's really hard to bet pitcher props the first couple games of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I mean, this is actually a late day considering how much is going on here. But we talked about Sweet 16 plays earlier in the week. You can still find that episode um, on the Inside the Lines playlist. A couple player props to complement that for tonight's games. Some college baseball, just two NBA games, two props uh, to take you guys home with. And tomorrow we'll have a lot more NBA, I believe, correct? Too much. I think I may record mine in advance and then, you know. <laughs> Send us an and just take a break. Yeah. I can't. It's like, it's like, I'm not a Nick. I can't Josh Hart this thing and play 48 minutes, you know, and, and grab yeah. rebounds like a maniac, you know. It's like we have Thibodeau, Mackenzie Thibodeau, just demanding <laughs> way yes. too, much, too much time on the court. This is true. This Coming is some true. slack. Yeah. The Yankees have first and second no outs. That means guaranteed double play right now. Yeah, yeah, if you, yeah. If you can't wait. The Yankees double play. Right Look, now, I'm, I, would do it. I haven't brought this up. I'm annoyed by uh, Jake because he's like a self-professed Yankee fan, and then he's been keep, keeps on referring to the Orioles as his Orioles, and keeps like I gotta say my Orioles. Po- pointing out the fact that pointing out the fact that I'm not high, the models not high on the Orioles, but he is, as if baseball. as if he didn't. <laughs> you're just trying to claim. You know, I, I was on the know. Orioles last year. John and I were on the Orioles last year, so I don't know. I like. I, I was born in Baltimore City. <laughs> with the church right next to the home stadium. I told you my Brooks Orioles. Robinson story. I three Baltimore Orioles, uh, what, you know, kids went to my high school. Uh, my a, Cal Ripken's wife was, a, was my high school. What's that? Are you an Orioles fan though? Well, you know, it's hard for a lot of years because we were such an awesome team, the most like the model franchise. And even though Peter Angelos, who recently passed away, the owner, um, did a lot of things to keep the team in Baltimore, he did also did a lot of things that were very Yankee like in the 90s. And he would, you know, got Albert Bell and a bunch of dudes. He s- destroyed our farm system kind of for, for a good 10 years so back in the 90s. Well, he, did, you know, he, he didn't do that was Yankee-like. He didn't win the World Series. The we 90s. didn't win. Well, you guys didn't win in the entire decade, the entire Don Mattingly era. Um, but uh, we won it 40 is- years ago. 40 years ago. I remember exactly the last play. I remember everything. But uh, yeah, it was he a long time ago. Said he didn't stick with and be loyal to his fans or to yeah. his team. Okay, That's no one's fault but yours here. Okay, Can't be bitter <sighs> about everyone else being Orioles fans. You had your opportunity. 
You let it it's go. like if you've been married for something that long, you can't just always be like courting, you know, <laughs> at a certain point you gotta be able to go on cruise control. You know, I don't you can't know. always be, you can't, the passion's not always going to be there after 50 years. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm a Phillies fan. All yeah. right. Speaking All right. of, that is postponed, but we'll have more MLB tomorrow. We'll have tons of NBA. We'll talk about some more sweet 16 props for those plays. So I hope, we get to see everyone tomorrow. Everyone has a little more money in their pocket, including myself. So good luck with your bets tonight, and we'll see you guys Friday.